Hey guys, in this video I want to explain uh, what are the best video settings for a competitive advantage uh, while at the same time giving the most FPS possible. Uh, so let's get right into it. Brightness is a personal preference thing. The default is 93%, but I like my game a little bit brighter, so I put it on 100%. I also play 4-3 stretched 1280 by 960 on the full screen and the max amount of hertz. Uh, 1280 by 960 is still the most common resolution, but there's plenty of other resolutions and a lot of players play native resolution right now as well, uh, which is all up to you. Then what does matter is the advanced video settings. First of all is boost player contrast. Um, there's not a big difference between having it enabled and disabled. It creates a small halo around the player, making it a little bit easier to see people on a longer distance. Uh, some pro players have it off, some pro players have it on. Uh, there's not really any harm uh, in your performance if you keep this on enabled. Uh, V-Sync should always be disabled. Uh, Anti-aliasing mode, I see a lot of people playing four times MSAA. If you like the anti-aliasing, I personally don't use it because uh, I like the sharp edges. Uh, but if you do, you could experiment with four times or two times. Global shadow quality actually gives a competitive advantage. If you have it on low, you will not see a lot of shadows that will give away a enemy's position. Whereas if you keep it on high, it will give you a lot of information on shadows. Uh, you do not have to put it on very high, uh, but medium is also not very good. So you should put it on high at least. Uh, model and texture detail I keep on low. Texture filtering mode I also keep on by linear. Then shader detail and particle detail can also both be on low. Ambient occlusion I have on high. Uh, I saw a Drenz video where he showed that when a player is standing against a wall, ambient occlusion on, it will cast a shadow on the wall. Also giving the player a fraction of a second before you actually see the player, which can also be uh, of a competitive advantage. High dynamic range as of right now should be on quality. If you put it on performance with lower settings or a lower resolution, it can cause the game to become incredibly grainy. That's why most pro players are playing with this setting on quality right now. Fidelity FX super resolution, pretty much everyone I've seen has it on disabled. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency is on Enabled for me. Um, previously there was a bug with this and most people played on Disabled. Now I see most have it enabled. Enabled plus boost can cause some stability issues where you actually have more uh, input latency than without it. Uh, but that's also something that there's still a lot of people experimenting with it. So keeping it on Enabled for now should be more than enough. As for the NVIDIA settings, you can start with clicking on use my preference emphasizing performance and applying and then going to use advanced 3D settings. Um, all of this will be off by default uh, except for uh, gamma correction. I like to keep it off because I prefer my colors that way. I like it when a player standing against the wall, it helps contrast it better with this off. Uh, but you can both try it on and off. It doesn't really affect your performance either way. Um, the next thing is low latency mode. Uh, we have Reflex NVIDIA in-game right now, and those two don't work together either way. Uh, so you can leave it off in the NVIDIA control panel if you use it in-game, because it will prefer using the one in-game either way. Then for your rendering GPU, select your main graphics card. Power management mode should be on prefer maximum performance. Your refresh rate should be on highest available. Shader cache size, I put on 10 gigs. Uh, the default size, I believe, is um, 4 gigabytes. Uh, so I like to have it a little bit larger because I play uh, a lot of games. Texture filtering uh, and astrophic sample optimization should be on on. So this should be on allow. Uh, texture filtering quality should be on high performance. Trilinear optimization should be on. Threaded optimization auto. And all of this should be off and on auto. 
Then for your physics settings, I personally use my graphics card uh, on this, but it shouldn't really have an effect on CS. Uh, in change resolution, make sure you have your resolution selected. This does not have to match your resolution in game. Uh, I like to have a native resolution desktop for my other games as well. Make sure you are using the highest refresh rate of your monitor here. In desktop color settings, I personally drag my digital vibrance up a lot, but that's up to personal preference. Uh, the next thing that's important is desktop size and position. If you want to play stretched, you select full screen here and you check override scaling mode. If you have a good monitor, I heard it's best for input lag if you put this on display, but I also see a lot of CS pros playing with this on GPU. You should play what you prefer to play with either way, because the difference in input lag with modern GPUs and monitors is so minimal that it doesn't really matter. But theoretically, display should have the lowest input latency. As for audio options, a few things changed as well. Uh, the volume, it should be up to your personal preference. Uh, EQ profile, I heard the best to keep is natural, uh, but you can experiment with crisp. Uh, Left-right isolation, a lot of people told me to put it on 0%, but then the game sounded very weird. And on 100% it also sounds extremely weird. Uh, so I heard that a percentage between, I believe it was 35 and 75 is the most accurate to CSGO sounds. Uh, so you should experiment with it, but for now 50-50 sounds good for me. A perspective correction I heard should be off, uh, otherwise it completely ruins your sound and being able to tell where it comes from. Uh, then for game settings, uh, you should lower your ping to the point where you can still find a server, uh, but you're not going to be finding a server that's really far away from you, like 100 plus ping. So I would recommend putting it on 50 or below. Uh, max acceptable game traffic bandwidth, you can put it on unrestricted. Uh, this is also the rate command in the console. I heard that if you put it on 1 million, that's actually the max, uh, but when I do that, this uh, turns into extremely restricted and I know it should be just a visual bug in my interface, uh, but there's something about it that still makes me question like, is it actually working right now? But theoretically, you should put your rate on 1 million, like that. Uh, buffering to smooth over packet loss, you should put on none, uh, and that's pretty much it for the game settings. For mouse settings, um, most pros play with a DPI of 800 or 400 still, but I think this really doesn't matter. You should play with a DPI you're comfortable with. Um, mouse sensitivity in tactical FPS games is typically lower, um, so I play around the average 800 DPI 1.05 cents, uh, but if I really wanted to talk about mouse sensitivity, it would be a whole other video. If you do have any other questions about settings or CS2, uh, feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll answer as much as possible. Uh, otherwise, you can also come to my Twitch channel, it's linked in my description. And when I'm streaming, I also tend to answer questions about uh, CS or Kovax or anything you have a question about. So yeah, that was it for the optimal video settings in CS2 as of right now. Um, so I hope it was useful and thank you for watching.